All right, so the first time I seen one of these things, uh, I was a teenager. I had my very first pickup truck, an old 71 Chevrolet. And uh, I was commercial fishing at the time. It was, it was basically my first real job. Actually, I think the first, yeah, the first thing I did to make money was actually tied, I tied fishing lures and packaged them, made 12 cents per, and I split and sold firewood a little bit. And then um, after that, I went into commercial fishing. Back then, you know, as we're talking mid 80s, uh, if you were commercial fishing, you made some money. And I would excitedly get out of commercial fishing just in time for hunting to start. And I would hunt every single frickin' day because everybody else had a normal job and had to go to work. But I was too young to hunt with a firearm by myself, so I hunted with a bow and arrow because uh, actually nobody in my, my immediate family actually hunted. So I had to teach myself how to hunt. And uh, that's what I did. I ran around with a bow and arrow by myself since the time I was like 12, 12 years old, I think. Because my mother, she lived rurally. I didn't live with her. She lived with this alcoholic dirt bag. And I used to have to go to her place every couple of weeks to uh, whatever, to the divorce agreement, whatever it was. And uh, there was a little bow and arrow there. I'd just get in the house. As soon as I got there, I'd grab that bow and arrow and go running around the woods. And uh, that's what I did. Because I just wanted, wanted to stay away from that drunken scumbag who sat there in the, in the house drinking and watching golf. <laughs> God, he's a loser. I was 17 years old maybe 18 I was probably 18 years old you can see me here with my pickup truck uh, it's, it's definitely around the same time and um, where I was hunting was up it was up a logging road 20 something K up the main line and then I would take this old spur dead end with nowhere to park but right on the side of the road there's no turnoffs and I would park up that road about, I think I'd go another 5K or something like that, five or six kilometers. And then I would take an old skitter trail all the way up, hike all the way up this mountain, over the top, and then over the top down the backside, this old trail was weaved down through some rocks and around these upper cliffs and go down to this landing down there. And there's an old, there's cliffs and big timber and a, and a slash pool there. And I would hunt there with my bow and arrow. And it would take me about an hour and a bit to get there from the truck. And I was always, I always hunted by myself, always. I mean, let's face it, you can't still hunt with two people with a bow and arrow. But I always hunted by myself, and most of my friends were still in school, or they were, uh, had their day jobs, and I'm hunting all, every day of the week. And the weird thing about the spot is, I'd, I'd go all the way up, get on the top, and as you went on the top, I'd go around, there's still a rocky peak, not quite on the very top, and, and this old skitter road would belt around it, and go through this little, this little area, like the road went through, thick bushes on your side, timber, and rock bluff on the right, a little bit of a rock bluff back in the bush on the left, but you couldn't see. You couldn't see either way on either side of the road. It was so thick, and you were low. You're the lowest point of ground going through this pass. And more often than not, and I dread it. I used to dread going through that little cut because I just get the hair. I get, I'm getting goosebumps right now, but the hair on the back of my neck would stand on end. I'd feel uneasy. Real, you just felt real, real vulnerable. I've got goosebumps up and down my back right now, remembering it. And I used to just dread going through there, and I'd have an arrow on my bow, kind of like, uh, get through this part. And it was only about maybe 200 yards long, 300 yards to that little pass. And then all of a sudden it would open up again, and I'd drop down, road would dead end. I would sneak into that zone real slow, still hunt in there. And then I would hunt there until it got dark. And then I started to hike my hike out. It would be absolutely pitch black by the time I got to my truck. And then I have to go through that stupid stinking little pass again. But it wasn't every single time I went through there, I felt nervous, uneasy, anxiety. It was a handful of times, but let's face it, it only takes one time. If you go, if you feel those feelings being anywhere in the world once, you don't forget it. <laughs> you don't forget that feeling and you're gonna be a little curious and wondering what's it gonna be like going through there next time, you know? So anyway, I started hiking back, made it through that pass, Pretty certain I had the dread feeling going through there this particular night. I don't really remember because the rest of the night well, wasn't really, I don't really remember because the rest of the night was kind of real shitty. And I uh, might confuse my memory with feeling anxiety going through that part of the walk. So it's September and it's hot out. So typically September you're hunting first light and last light. First light and last light is the best time to get game early season before the rut or anything for deer. And when it gets dark out, the timber, any, any silhouette, 
skyline from the top of the trees down rocks is black crisp outlined silhouette against that nice blue sky you know that evening blue sky september sky when the sun's down but it's still that bright blue color and uh you know of course if you look into the bush on your side it's still kind of gloomy i mean you can see you can see it's just not pitch black so i'm about halfway into my hike back and it's all downhill now winding down winding down winding down and I'm on a particular part of the trail, it was really washed out from water. So it's really noisy too, right? There's not, there was not a sound. I mean, we're talking dead, dead quiet, not a sound. And, uh, and I'm not trying to be quiet. So you can imagine the, you know, the, the rock, can't make the sound here, but you can imagine the rock sound underneath your feet of that dry summer, September ground. And uh, I'm not trying to be quiet. And take note, seeing light to see antlers ended half an hour previous so you can imagine how dark it is by now because that's when you stop hunting you stop hunting when you and well obviously if there's a deer in front of you you can't tell if it's a buck it's too dark to hunt but i would stay until it was absolute last chance and i'd start my hike back so i'm going down like on an angle you know fairly steep and you got to think this all happened really fast so i'm going down the trail and it goes straight down and there's a rock bluff in front of me big rock bluff that hits the trail right there so the trail obviously goes the trail goes down dog legs to the right at the base of that rock wall and keeps going to down to the right and, and winding on back to the truck and uh so i'm going down this thing down this hill and you gotta think walking 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 making tons of noise glance up here's this guy skylined on top of the rock right above me probably 15 yards 10 15 15 ish it was so blatantly obvious we were looking at each other as silly and me you know 18 years old mid 80s no internet um who thinks about sasquatch <laughs> who who would ever dream for a second that the human form up there isn't a human no one you know what i mean you're not familiar with sasquatch or these beings uh in the mid 80s when you're 18 years old you just aren't and if you are it's probably because a seen one or a family member told you they saw one that's about it there's a couple goofy dramatic shows on TV about the subject, but yeah, so I reacted instantly with thinking it was another hunter sitting on the rock waiting on that game trail, waiting on that road. And I just automatically thought it was another hunter waiting for last light for a deer to come walking out and, and shoot it. I didn't even think for a second that seeing light for deer antlers had ended 45 minutes ago when it's way too dark to be hunting. That means he would have been sitting there in the dark, wasting his time with nothing to do for 45 minutes. But anyway, um, I looked up, perfect silhouette. Um, I just went, oh, hey, any luck? Like, that's how fast it was. So I'm going to walk along, look up, oh, any luck? Just like that. So I only got to look at that thing for about two seconds. But I do remember vividly when the second speech came out of my mouth, you could see that thing kind of move, like, oh. And, uh, but the real, real, the part that really freaked me out at that moment was when that silhouette went like this when I spoke to it. I mean, you can't be more blatantly open to each other. I mean, we're, we're right here looking at each other in the middle of frickin' nowhere at 15 yards. There isn't a human being alive that's not going to go, oh, hey, how's it going? You know what I mean? So the second I spoke, it all of a sudden went like this. Kind of rose up. You can just see it getting a little bigger and then... sinks out of sight behind the rock intentionally i'm like holy shit what the fuck you know and instantly every single hair on your body's on end uh, you're starting to breathe faster it's like holy shit it's, this guy's gonna attack me this guy's trying to set up to kill me or something all by yourself you're 18 years old you got a bow and arrow and i got my arrow on i'm standing there dead frozen because it's too dark to see anything in the bush and i want to be able to hear if this guy's like going through the, the bush to get down ahead of me to jump me in the trail, is he gonna circle around behind me? I'm just sitting there dead frozen, shitting myself, listening to see what direction this guy's going. And you, there was, there wasn't a freaking sound. And then, uh, then my heart was beating out of my freaking chest. You just don't know what's happening, what's going on. And uh, you, it was, you just, I felt so threatened and uncomfortable, I felt so uncomfortable and threatened it was off the chart. And 
but I knew better to run because if you run, if you think you're being pursued or chased in the forest or wherever and you start running and panicking, the sound you make from your body just running on that dry gravel or through the bush is going to drown out every single sound around you. So if I start running down that frickin' logging road, I'm not gonna hear this dude or this thing running behind me or running up ahead of me to cut me off. I need, a, you know, I need at least some kind of a warning so I can at least get my broadhead between me and this dude or me and this thing or me and this whatever it is, so I can at least have some kind of a chance at, at fighting back. You know what I mean? You're not, I'm not gonna run, I'm gonna fight. So I kept my arrow, my bow pointed towards that side of the trail that he was on and I had to basically, I'm like walking like this, like. Looking at the ground, just listening. I was more intent on listening, because I'm not gonna see anything. It's, it's dark out. And uh, I had to go at that pace all the way to get to the damn truck. Because there's thick bush on either side of the road all the way to the truck, it wasn't wide open. And this guy, this thing could have been anywhere between me and the truck. It probably took me about an hour, an hour of that feeling and that walk to get back to my truck. So, you know, my, my story isn't that exciting compared to the other ones and compared to other, and compared to other uh, episodes I've had of these things, but it was my very first one. And we, I went and sat in my truck. I finally got in the truck and I sat there and I was freaking li like I was on fire. You know, a common trait with all human beings is fright is actually anger. When you get scared, it's anger. And uh, I was on fire at the truck. I wanted to find this dude or whoever it was and knock the shit out of him, you know? It's like, who do you think you are? Anyway, but anyway, I, uh, I went out and looked in the road I was on. Not a track, not a truck track, not a dirt bike track, not a bicycle track, no tracks. I'm like, huh? And then I drove back down to where my road hit the main line and there's no tracks turning off to go up this old road that I was on just just mine there wasn't even a, a track going up the main logging road since I'd driven on it nothing nothing nobody but me and we're talking 30 kilometers in in the central center of Vancouver Island you know and then I started getting a little freaked out because I did I had a book on those things I bought when I was in grade five it's just one of those things in school, elementary school, where you bring in your three bucks, four bucks, whatever it was, and you look on an old menu with a whole pile of different soft cover books on it. You could order three in the class that ordered all the books, and I ordered the one with the monster on the front, and it was actually a book by John Green on Sasquatches. But uh, that's about the only knowledge I had on those. When I was in elementary school, I, wrote, I read a book once. That's it. So then, once I realized whoever it was has been here either for a while or they what I, I was absolutely, absolutely confused. So we went back there. We went back there. I, I went back there the next day with a buddy of mine, and we snuck a rifle with us and snuck a rifle in there. And I got him to go up on that rock in the same position, same spot where I was. And I went down and looked up. And my buddy, you know, what was he, 5'10, 185 pound dude? And if he, he was maybe, maybe, one third the size of the guy, the thing that was on that rock looking at me. Maybe one third of the size. And then, and then it was like, oh my God, you know? I mean, you can imagine what the thoughts that go through your mind once you make that realization. And then, so getting back to the encounter, what I think what happened was, you know, obviously this thing had watched me a few times up on that rock above me when I was going through the top pass where I felt vulnerable and the hair in your neck standing up. Obviously that was a good spot for them to sit there and watch me, whatever they're doing. And then uh, on the way out, maybe they watched me go through that pass and then he went burned down beeline, got up on the rock to watch me again, whatever they're getting their kicks out of, right? And where he screwed up was when he realized I saw him, see, it was timber, skyline, timber, timber, timber. And then that rock, top of the rock skyline, and that was only about 10 yards wide and then it continued timber, timber skyline again. So he screwed up with his backdrop. He didn't have the timber behind him to kill his, his outline, his silhouette, and that's where he screwed up. And, uh, and that's when he realized he screwed up is when I looked right out. Hey, any luck? <laughs> Shit, he sees me, you know? And that's my story. So obviously a lot of people are gonna go, oh, you don't even know if that's Scott, you didn't even see his face, you didn't see how big it was. You know what, jam it up your ass, you weren't there. 
doesn't matter what you think. Um, I know what I saw. It wasn't a bear. There isn't a, there isn't a wild animal alive that knows to hide behind a tree on you or hide behind a rock. None of them. Bears, cougars, wolves, grizzly bears, you name it. I've seen it. I've got it. Every single wild animal, when they see you, they look and they turn around and they run. <laughs> there isn't an animal alive that'll go. You know, they don't think that way. They go by reaction. So anyway, that was my first encounter. In, uh, I've got probably half a dozen since then that I can share with you later on. And that's probably why I told you about these other ones first, because they're a little more fun to tell those than, than my own. And it's not about me, right? 